not touch the snow in North Yorkshire. Not a bad thing. Colder weather is a good time for cleaning up the queen excluders. Makes the wax and the propolis really brittle, easy to scrape off. We'll go and have a go. Every year I spend a lot of hours during the winter at this bench, making up new frames, cutting out old comb, all sorts of jobs. And you're dealing with a lot of cold tools, metal hive tools, small nails, etc. And you can see how cold it is now, see my breath. I think it's about minus three. And the only way to warm your hands up was to rub them together, blow on them, and occasionally stick them under my cap to try and keep warm. Uh, and I've done that for years. Anybody walking in must have thought, blimey, it's reminiscent of a, one of the grimmest scenes out of a Dickensian novel, sputtering candle and all. But uh, no, obviously I don't work by candlelight, never have. Well, not often anyway. Um, that's just there for effect. And then we install this. Away nicely. Put a few of them on. Shut the door, let it draw a bit. Right, time to get these queen excluders cleaned up. Some of them aren't so bad. Some have an awful lot of brace comb on them. So I'm gonna carry them all down the other end of the shed. I've got the fire lit. And uh, scrape them clean down there. To clean the queen excluders, I just have a simple wooden frame, four bits of wood, and that just slots them over the top of the wheelbarrow. And then I rest my clean excluders on there, scrape and clean, and the wax drops into the bottom of the wheelbarrow. We've also got that going in the background. Bit of radiant heat. Just looking at it makes you feel warmer. Just use a hive tool for scraping the wax off. Rest the clean excluders on the frame. Get the door down. Working all the time in the direction of the arrows. Go across, snag a wire, bend it. Queen could to queen be through next spring. So I do both top and bottom. Got the main of it off. And then where there's wax left between the wires, I lay it down and just let the hive tool fall. Tool checking itself, and then just show the hive tool thickness compared to the wires. So it goes through without without bending the wires. Done one go there. I'm gonna get a few gathered up. I'll take them to back to the other end of the shed. The rest on the pallets and stay there until the required in spring. These aren't so bad to do with these. You do occasionally get a really bad one, and if it's completely clogged up, then I will use a blowtorch and melt the wax off the wires. Uh, I don't like doing that as I have to. I don't know that that heat and the subsequent expansion and contraction of the metal does uh, the spacing any good. I, I don't know. I just think it's better than it can be avoided. It's not the most thrilling job. Like a lot of jobs in the bee world. It's a tedious bit repetitive, but it has to be done. And I'm not saying this is the best way. Other people may have other ideas on, on a better way of doing this. Uh, I've done it this way for a long time. That in itself, of course, doesn't mean to say that it's right. When I do these videos, I don't mean them as a, an instructional guide for anybody else. I'm simply recording the story of what I do. 
with the beads. Yeah. Not perfect, better than it was. There's uh, a word, a C word, I can use with the bees, and that word is compromise. From bee sites to management system, everything. It's all, all seems to be a bit of compromise all the way through. This one hardly needs doing, it hardly anything on this one. As we're cleaning the excluders, we found one or two that need uh, a bit of repair work. The grid's coming away from the frame on this one. It's a common enough problem. They're actually held in with tiny little pins that are cut off. So, those two there. Those two are what I've just taken out. And I'm going to replace them with some longer ones. Go right through the wooden frame, cut them off and bend them over. So sort of riveted on in effect. So I'm on the panel pin in. Same these holes down the side. through so then reduce the length of them a little bit Anvil. That's it, they're all done, ready for spring. In behind these travelling screens is my hot water system. Immersion tank there, head of tank up there. We'll turn off the water supply and drain it down. We've had a few frosty nights, and if it gets really bad, it could damage it all. then just to try and prevent any accidents in a recent video I commented on the uh, the bits of cardboard on the stacks of brood boxes and the F standing for when they were fumigated um, to try and control wax moth and somebody in the comments asked how I did that so I'll give a demonstration wouldn't normally do it at this time of year uh, end of November now um, wax moth aren't active for what it is I'll give a demonstration picture paints a thousand words so the equipment required a metal trough a burner just a metal container ventilation holes in it and the lid has a bent nail to form a hook uh, discs of sulphur an empty brew box and a metal, piece of metal that goes over the top uh, to try and uh, keep the fumes in. And the idea is that we burn these sulphur discs and that releases sulphur dioxide which will kill all stages of the wax moth and perhaps us as well if we're not careful. We'll place the tray in the middle of the brood box, the trough. Take the lid off the burner 
And then attach three of the discs to the bent nail. There's a hole in the middle of the discs. Just fiddle it to get them on. And then light the sofa. It takes a little while to get it going sometimes. Gotta watch malt material doesn't drop into your hands. Be going all right, lower it into there, and then place an empty brew box over there, and that goes on there. So we can then place the metal lid over there. I have used bits of plywood for this job, but uh, when you take them off, it, the plywood can be blackened. Could be with soot, it may be scorching. So, for safety, and I'll use a piece of metal over the top. And then we'll leave it about 10 minutes. Been running about 10 minutes now, we'll just have a look inside. Yeah, that's been successful. Yeah, that's that treatment for wax moth completed. Uh, Trek one, two, three, four. Five boxes there. This top one's the, uh, the empty brew box. They're set on a solid pallet. Pallet with a solid floor, so the fumes can't escape there. I sometimes do six, might do six at one go. Beyond that, you have trouble reaching, reaching up to uh, light the burner and so on. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. That's our 10th video in just under two months, so thank you to everybody who subscribed, liked and commented. Please, if you haven't already, click the like and subscribe. It won't cost you anything, and ring the bell for notification of future videos. Bye for now.